It really is true. The early birds will get the worms. There's just one problem. Unless I'm blind drunk on tequila, I don't tend to eat worms. Morning, guys, and welcome back to the channel. The Admiral GMT Diver by Revelot is here. If you're not familiar with Revelot or Revelo, it is a micro brand from Malaysia around five months ago. I reviewed their 39mm Hex Mariner Diver and gave it a really good review. I liked that watch very much. Original, unusual, but likeable design, good build quality, early bird prices meant it represented fantastic value for money. Now, this one is being touted as the best value for money micro brand GMT watch you will find containing the NH34. There's no denying the early bird prices on this watch make it almost irresistible. I think we should head over to the light box and check it out. So this is the color version that Kevin from Revelot has sent me to feature in this video. It does look like Kevin has sent out pretty much every single color option available to lots of different YouTubers. So yeah, there should be some content somewhere on the color version that you like if this is not the one um, that you are that interested in. And I am a touch late to the party on this one. I must apologize. I think I'm one of the last people um, to produce this video. Um, I had a little bit of a tumble playing football and managed to fracture my knuckle here and then this one here. So um, handling watches in the light box like this hasn't been particularly easy. I had a little bit of time off which has put me behind schedule. The upside is though I think I might be able to fill some gaps on some knowledge on this watch. I think there's been a few issues raised or some questions posed to different reviewers that I might be able to answer in this video. So I'm going to start with those, actually. If you are interested in this watch, um, yeah, hopefully I can add some value um, to this watch. And if you're new to this watch, stick around because I'll run through all the specifications um, in a moment. So if you are seriously considering um, ordering this GMT Diver by Revelot, um, there's some stuff you probably should know. It will be available to order on the 3rd of May. Um, early bird prices I mentioned in the introduction. Um, really good value for money, this one. NH34 powered GMT micro brand diver. Um, $249 um, for this watch. Um, if you want it on a um, silicon strap like this, or if you want it on the stainless steel bracelet, it will be $295 US dollars. Those prices are reduced from the everyday prices, which are $339 um, if you want it on this one. Um, or $386 um, if you want it on this um, uh, bracelet. So that is what this watch is going to cost you once the early bird prices are no longer available. And I think um, Kevin is making a limited number of each color version um, available at the early bird prices. And um, also, if you want to sign up to the early bird prices, I think you actually have to sign up to their newsletter on their website. So yeah, if you are interested in this watch, it's probably worth doing that um, because that might um, put you in a better position to get one at those early bird prices. Now, I think it's really important for me to mention this is a fully working prototype. They've basically tried to get this watch um, as close as damn it to the full production watch. But after these prototypes have been made, I think they've decided to make a few changes. So let me just quickly run through those. The GMT hand will be thicker, bigger, basically, around 25% bigger because it's not the clearest, is it? Especially against that sort of dark dial. The colour of the date wheels are going to be changed to white, I believe. The colour of the branding on some of the watches is going to change. So, for example, the orange dial version, um, the branding is going to be black, so it will be more prominent. Some reviewers have said that the bracelet finishing is a little bit um, crisp or sharp. I don't think it's too bad. Um, but yeah, Kevin has said that um, they had already decided to basically soften the corners of the bracelet. They're also going to close up some of the gaps. So um, the gap between the end link and the case and also just the gap or the gaps between all of the links. Um, so they're just sort of making the bracelet a little bit more compact. And there's been quite a few comments on the style of the end links used um, on this watch. And um, yeah, I spoke to Kevin about that and he mentioned that this was actually a very conscious decision to go with these sort of flat end links instead of fitted or shaped end links. And the reason they did that was because, well, they were so happy with the bracelet and they thought, um, you know, this clasp might be quite useful for buyers of this watch to have on other watches that have 22mm lugs that they just wanted to make this bracelet 
um, one that people could transfer to other watches. So, um, yeah, that's what they decided in the end. And I do think that the shape um, of basically the aperture for the bracelet is going to suit um, different straps as well. So the fact that they've made this watch suitable for these flat end links means it's going to look good on straps like this or other straps that you might own um, that are suitable for 22 mil lugs. And I think they might also be reducing um, the size of the logo on the clasp a touch, but I think that's it. Everything else you see on this watch should be exactly the same, um, you know, on the production watches. So, um, yeah, let me run through some of the specifications. Stainless steel um, throughout, case, bezel, crown, case back, bracelet and clasp, uh, sapphire crystal, uh, ceramic bezel insert, so decent specifications or materials used throughout. I've mentioned it already, it is a GMT diver, so it's sort of half GMT watch, half dive watch, uh, 200 meters of water resistance therefore. Screw down case back, screw down crown, diver's bezel. The GMT markers are on the chapter ring, not particularly legible, but this is an office GMT. It's not a true GMT. So it's more suited to people that might want to know a second time zone while they're living in their you know, home country. Um, a traveler's GMT has a GMT hand that you can move individually. So you can essentially isolate it and move it while not interrupting um, the, well, regular three hands. So um, yeah, it's not a true GMT. You can use it as a traveler's GMT. Of course you can, it can give you two different time zones. Um, but yeah, the NH34 is a, well, it's known as an office GMT. The bezel therefore is a diver's bezel, 120 click unidirectional. It's a touch light. Um, the alignment on this one is pretty good. The clicks aren't particularly crisp. Um, the grip's nice actually, um, nice bit of um, knurling or whatever you want to call that um, on the bezel. It matches the crown actually very nicely. But yeah, it's, it's not a fantastic bezel action. It's okay. Now you might look at this watch and think it's a rather interesting looking watch. Like I mentioned in the introduction, I'm not a fan of eating worms. I'm not wild about the way this one looks. I think it's interesting. I do give uh, Revelot a lot of credit for producing unique, unusual, and sometimes really good looking original watches. This one for me though, um, is just a touch too angular and unusual. They have taken inspiration from, I'm gonna read this because I keep wanting to put a C in front of literal, literal combat ships. They are um, basically military ships in the US Navy, I believe, that are designed for shallow waters and close to coast combat. And um, yeah, the shape of the ships closely resemble the hands. And there's obviously um, a sort of sharp angular look to the case, which you know also reflects those literal combat ships. But yeah, there's just a lot going on for me. And um, I don't know, I'm just not wild about some of the design elements. I'm not wild about this sort of loomed cross head element and this sort of whirlpool, um, what would you call it, sort of swirly dial. I mean, they've matched it on the case back. Um, yeah, and the clasp for me, I haven't come onto the bracelet and the clasp actually, um, but it's a touch too big. I do like the bracelet, really like the bracelet, unusual links, lots of light plates, fully brushed, but still you're going to get lots of light play um, on this watch, some nice sort of sharpish angles, which is pretty cool. The clasp as well for me, just a touch chunky. It is a, um, well, 22 mil lugs tapering down to 20 mil, so it's quite a thick um, bracelet or wide bracelet, which is gonna help with comfort actually, um, because you've got quite a lot of weight in this case. And um, as I've mentioned many, many times, when you have a fairly substantial bracelet and um, clasp on watches that weigh as much as this, it just helps to control the weight when it's on your wrist. Um, but yeah, this clasp for me, just a bit too chunky. There is an on the fly adjustment system here. If I can do it, I haven't got a huge amount of strength in my thumb yet. Oh yeah, there you go. Um, you can just um, press that sort of button in and then slide it back in. Let me just oh, do that one more time. There you go, look, individual clicks. So it's a sort of on the fly adjustment, not the smoothest action I've got to say, um, but it's there if you need it. Oh, it doesn't help that I've got no strength in my left hand. Sorry guys. 
I'm now going to test the loom over a five minute period and um, the initial loom burst certainly looks impressive. I think it's going to last pretty well. It's also worth noting that the loom is different on all of the different color variations. On this one, it looks to be mostly blue BGW9. Well, on the whole, the loom looks very, very good. Strong on the bezel, strong on, well, two of the three hands and strong on the dial. The second hand has pretty much vanished. And the GMT hand has the same color loom as the loom on the outer edge of the dial. So it sort of blends in a little bit. Maybe a different colored loom on the end of that GMT hand would have been a good idea. But um, yeah, overall, it looks pretty strong. Now, the early bird price for this watch on this silicon strap is 249 US dollars. That undoubtedly makes this one of, if not the cheapest, micro brand NH34 powered GMT watch you're likely to see. And actually, the silicon strap is very, very nice. I love this red detail down the center. It feels um, fairly substantial, but soft and malleable. Quick release spring bars. It's signed with the Revolot logo, a couple of retainers, a little bit of taper to it, and the buckle, very nicely finished. Um, some polished chamfered edges, brushing, and a signature. So yeah, um, it's definitely a viable option, although and when it comes to watches like this, I would always recommend picking them up on the bracelet because I just much prefer the bracelets, but it's definitely um, a good, cheaper alternative. So there really is lots to like about this watch and at the early bird prices, um, yeah, it is going to represent fantastic value for money. However, for me, um, just no tingles. I'm just not crazy about the way it looks. There are some design elements that I like. I mean, I do like the bezel insert. The bracelet is really, really nice. And actually, I like the sort of angular case, but I'm just not wild about the design of the dial and the hands. I know what they're trying to achieve. They've taken strong inspiration from that literal combat ship. Um, but yeah, it's just not something that is resonating with me. Unfortunately, it's just one of those things. But um, from the comments section of other reviews, it does look like there are lots of people that are really impressed um, with the design and um, what they've managed to achieve. I loved the 39mm Hex Mariner Diver. That for me was fantastic. Loved pretty much every single design feature on that watch. Um, this one for me, sadly, um, it's not a worm that I'm going to be getting up early to nibble on, unfortunately. But yeah, if you are, um, I'll put a link in the video description, guys. It's not an affiliate link. It just takes you to their website where you can try and take advantage of those fantastic discounts. All right, guys, as always, thanks for watching.